Hi, and welcome to another edition of Motor Rage How To. Today, we're going to introduce a new tool. Same family as what we've been using, only this is a low amp current clamp. And boy, is that a valuable tool to add to your scope arsenal. Stick around, we'll start exploring the uses of that tool next. Hey, thanks for sticking around to watch today's episode. You know, we've uh, spent a lot of time with the high current amp clamp lately. Uh, we've done some relative compression tests with it. We've shown you how to add a reference pattern on a second channel so you can identify which cylinder is giving you a problem. We've talked about triggers. Uh, we even did a complete battery charging system test recently, all using that high current clamp. But most of the systems on the vehicle that you're going to be dealing with are not going to require a uh, tool that's capable of measuring up to 600 amps, uh, far from it. We want some accuracy in lower amp measurements. And for that reason, I strongly recommend that if you haven't already, you add what's called a low amp current clamp to your scope arsenal. This has a, a so many uses, and we're gonna start exploring those in the next few series of how to. Uh, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the tool itself. You'll notice right off the bat that the jaws are a lot smaller because we're only gonna try to get around a very small gauge, 12, 16 gauge wire tops, you know, for most part for using this tool. Uh, or we're gonna use it with uh, a fusible link, which I'll show you here in a moment, and connect right up to the circuit at the fuse box. Uh, you know, I'm all about doing everything as easy as we can. So if I wanna measure current in a circuit, what's the first place that I'm gonna look for is a possible connection point. You bet, I'm going to the fuse box. Because if I can access that circuit independently there, then I can get a clean, as clean a measurement there as I can if I go trying to dive into the engine compartment, trying to get right around the wire, right at that component, right? So play it smart. Take the time to look at the schematics to see where's the best place to connect. And, and we'll get into that more too as we go along. The other thing I want to point out is that you want to make sure there's a good battery in your amp clamp, just like with the high amp clamp. Uh, in most, when you turn it on, there should be a little green light that lights up, letting you know that the battery's okay. Uh, if it starts to get weak, it may skew your readings or give you some funny looking patterns. Uh, also on these is uh, generally two scales to choose from. Uh, I think some are listed either 20 amp range or 60 amp range. This one is just a strict uh, correlation between the millivolts and the milliamps that it's measuring. Now, let me clarify, we talked about this uh, early on when we talked about scope accessories. There are a lot of accessories for your scope and they all do one thing. They take whatever form of measurement that you're trying to take and they convert it to a voltage input that your scope can recognize. So in this case, for every 10 milliamps that this tool is, is reacting to, it's going to output one millivolt to the scope. So when I'm setting up my screens, if I don't have an automatic drop down that scales it for me, I have to keep in mind that if I'm gonna use the first scale, the one millivolt is 10, uh, 10 milliamps will equal one millivolt. Well, that means if I'm seeing a volt on my screen, I'm actually measuring what? Think about it for a minute. Did you say 10 amps? Well, if you did, then you're correct. Uh, the next one up one scale, one millivolt is now 100 milliamps. So if I'm measuring 100 milliamps and I'm only putting out one millivolt, then I'm gonna have to go by 100. So if I'm measuring one volt on the screen, I'm measuring 100 amps. Now, this is only valid for a range of up to 60. So I'm probably never gonna measure anything quite that high. Most of the time, we're gonna to stick to that first scale. The one millivolt is equivalent to 10 milliamps and vice versa. So make sure you understand what that's for. Lastly, uh, is a little zero button. Now on the high amp clamp I showed you, there was actually a wheel you had to turn. This is just a simple matter of pushing the button to uh, zero the tool on your scope before you go ahead and take your measurement. And in most cases, we wanna to try to take an accurate current measurement because we can use Ohm's law to correlate what the resistance of that component is to make sure it's within spec. Vice versa, if you know what component that you're trying to connect to and it's not a motor, then you can use Ohm's law to get an idea of what type of current measurement you should expect, correct? Uh, some other useful purposes uh, for this tool and one that we're going to explore today is comparing multiple circuits at one time. Very good example is the use of current as a troubleshooting aid when you're looking for a, a weak or a ignition coil. Um, I can connect to the fuse that powers all the coils. Uh, I've already looked up the schematics. There's, that's all that's powering that uh, circuit is that one fuse. Uh, so there's nothing else being powered by that fuse. And I can connect there and I can look at the current ramps 
for all the ignition coils at one time. So if I think I have an issue with one, I can take a look at those and monitor those patterns. And if I see one that stands out from the rest, that doesn't look like the rest, well, that's the one I want to home in and take a quicker look at. Um, now, also a word on that. When you do connect to the fuse, you have to make sure that you check the power distribution and make sure that fuse is not powering multiple systems, which it can uh, in some cases. So you'll see a weird current pattern as you're seeing total current through that fuse impacted by all the different systems that that fuse is, is, feeding, is powering up. So you're with me on that? So in my case, I want to get a clean signal and just the ignition coils. I have to make sure that I'm far enough downstream that that's the only thing that my amp clamp is picking up. And once again, if I check the schematic for this 13 RAM pickup, I see that the ignition coils are, are the only thing fed by the fuse that I'm going to connect to in the fuse box. All right. So the next question is, how do we connect to that, that fuse box? Well, there's one tool out there, or one product out there that you may have in your box already. It's called a Fuse Buddy. It looks kind of like this. And it's just a simple tool that's already made up to go in place of the fuse, and then you put the fuse that you removed here, so you're still protecting the circuit, and then you have a nice loop here to get your amp clamp around. Uh, you can make your own as well. Small, uh, simple uh, inline fuse holder, um, different types. It actually. You know, I'm not too worried about the type of fuse here, as long as the current rating is correct. I want to make sure I don't go anything higher than what the system is already equipped with. And you have to make sure that whatever ends you use are not going to damage the connector that you're putting them into. Uh, I actually have another one in the toolbox that has uh, swappable ends. In other words, it's just an interchange connection on the end so that I can go ahead and, and add uh, different tips to the same piece. Just uh, saves me some time and energy. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and get that scope set up, and then we're going to do a couple of captures. We'll show you how we set the scope up, wide range, and then I'll zoom in on the screen, run through it again, so that you can get an idea of uh, what we're doing on this particular scope and how you might accommodate those settings to your own scope. All right, let's get started. Okay, I've got my fuse jumper in place of the fuse powering the ignition coils inside the fuse box here under the hood. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and get the scope set up. I'm going to go ahead and use the four channel scope selection. Uh, this is not the, the snap-on clamp, obviously, that uh, many of you may already have with your snap-on platform. In that case, you can see that you can use one of the drop-down menus. And what that's going to do is instead of a voltage scale on that x-axis, that vertical axis, it's going to list it in terms of amps. Now, it does the math for you, right? But this is not hard. Uh, again, when I go to that first selection, it's just a simple matter of moving that decimal over one or multiplying the voltage reading times 10 in order to get the actual current measurement that I'm looking for. Now, the other thing, like I said though, in this particular case, I'm looking at a comparison between all the ignition coils. So while current may be a factor, I'm looking at the uniformity between those patterns. I'm looking for the one that doesn't look like the others that could indicate that there's a problem either with a shorted in the coil or maybe some feedback uh, from a misfiring plug that's, that's ringing back through that current pattern. There's a lot of information in there that I, could, that I could pull out and use for my diagnostics. But right now, let's just focus on the uniformity of the patterns. So I'm gonna stick with the four channel scope setup and we'll set up first the trace on the snap-on scope. Trace one was using, or channel one we're using. Okay, I already have it set up to two volts um, range. That's the total range on the scope. Um, nothing fancy here in the other, other menu items, so I'm pretty good there. We'll leave it there. Uh, then we'll go to setup and we'll take a look at the sweep time. And right now it's set for a total sweep, 200 milliseconds across the screen. I think I'm good with that. And then last, we'll take a look at setting up any kind of a trigger for this tool. Uh, I can set up auto, which we already have, or I can set it manually for a rising slope. So let's pick up the rising slope there. No particular reason that I'm using the rising slope, just, just happens to be the one I'm picking. And now we're all set up. All right, so now I'm gonna turn the tool on. I want you to watch the screen. And then I'm just gonna hit the zero button to make sure we're zeroed. And I'll place the tool around the uh, jumper lead, the fuse jumper lead, and we'll start it up.
right, so we can see that we got a pretty uniform pattern on there. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little more time on there that I really need to cover all eight cylinders. Let's just go ahead and freeze the pattern for a moment. And then we'll take a look at them and we can see that we have uniformity among those. If we want to monitor it, maybe it's an intermittent issue that we're chasing down, we can watch it as we go uh, to see how, uh, if there's any dropouts or any changes in the pattern. But again, this is a very quick way to gauge the, the health of all of the components at once. Can you think of other uses for it? Well, how about conventional fuel injectors? Same thing. I can take a look at the injector current patterns and I can tell if there's an internal short uh, or open, um, maybe even get some feedback on when the pintle's open because when we get to that, you'll see, you can actually see a variance in that current pattern when that injector opens and closes. So we'll take a look at that. And um, uh, it's, a very, it's a good diagnostic aid to help you get a real quick comparison of the two and see if right away if there's some fault in there that needs your attention. So let's run through that once more, but now I'm gonna zoom in on the screen so you can see what we did a little closer up. Okay, one more time uh, with a little close up on the screen. Again, um, might have to shift a little bit because the way the amp clamp is now kind of supporting the tool, get a nice level shot for you. But we're gonna pick the four channel scope and then we're gonna go into the setup and we'll start with the first channel. And again, look at the, the number that we selected for the voltage scaling, two volts uh, ac uh, across the screen. So, you know, we're starting uh, down here at zero and then up. Uh, so it works out to be like two tenths of a um, um, volt each increment. So remember what we said, if it's uh, 10 milliamps is equal to one millivolt. So if that's uh, 200 millivolts, that's times 10, that would be a two amp range. So we want to just keep that in mind two amps, four amps, six amps, and so on. Um, now we'll go back to our time frame, our sweep. Remember in our case, on this tool, the, the specifications are for the tire time across the screen. We have it at 200 milliseconds. That's gonna be fine, so we'll just leave it right there. Are you noticing that a lot of these time frames seem to be similar across a variety of these tests, right? Again, these things happen on the car pretty quickly. Uh, that's usually a good time base to start at. If we need to, we can use the adjustments on time and voltage to either look further out or look further in, right? So play with those numbers as you're getting comfortable with your scope. Um, let's take a look at trigger. Uh, we wanna make sure we have a trigger set. Uh, in this case, it's just set to auto. We're gonna let that poke. I said we did that last time. Let's do this manual this time. And we're gonna set it on the rising slope and we're gonna set it up to, oh, let's bring that up to uh, we'll put her somewhere right around let's see, 0.6. Then again, we're thinking of amperage, so that would be six amps. So that's where we're going to pick up on that on the rising slope, and uh, we'll exit out of that. So now we have our three factors in play. Now we can uh, turn our tool on. and we'll hit the zero button. All right. There's one thing I forgot about, I'm sorry, my bad. Uh, I'm not that familiar with the snap-on scope, but I did hear this the other day. Because the trigger we set so high, you notice I turn the tool on, but you don't see a pattern, you don't see anything on the screen. Well, because we haven't, we haven't hit the trigger. So I'm gonna put that back to auto. Okay, now you can see we do have something there, you see that? Because now I can go ahead and make sure that I'm zeroed. So I'm just going to push the little zero button. Make sure we're zeroed. And that's a good thing to remember if you snap on, guys. You know, if, if your trigger is set too high for your signal, then you're not going to see anything on the screen, right? So uh, it's not going to do that until the trigger actually sees that happening. So uh, in this case, I'm just going to use the auto function so I get that. Now we're ready to go. Let me sweep around here and uh, start it up.
and there you go there's a pattern on the screen again we can see that we're measuring between 1.2 and 1.4 volts on the screen apply the mass so we're running right about 13 amps on the coils and if you look closely you're going to see that there's a this one is like dropping in and out okay that has nothing to do with the signal but it has to do with the scope you know the signal i'm capturing and the time base i'm capturing i don't pretend to be expert enough to fully explain that but i think that's what we call aliasing don't let that throw you off we're just going to freeze it there so you can see that we got a nice steady pattern there uh, one that we can use uh, let's see what happens when we mess with the uh, with the trigger on that one just for giggles we'll set that back up we'll go back to whoop we'll go back to the trigger and now instead of this we're going to do the manual just like we had before okay that's a little more stable we don't have that that dropout but you can still see it right here where it just comes in and out and i'm pretty sure that's a matter of the buffering and the samples being collected by the tool so uh, that's probably what you're seeing there guys if you're a snap on uh, guy uh, how about putting in your two cents help us explain why we're seeing that but i'm going to tell you right now that's not a part that's not a problem with that signal so don't let that throw you off okay i don't know if you could see it in that last little bit of the clip as i went to uh, freeze the screen on that last little bit but you notice that that screen stopped right about halfway right where we're seeing that little fallout so i'm pretty sure based on where the cursor is here on the base of the screen showing how many frames have been stored that what all we've done is just hit the end of the buffer what does that mean now we're just replacing one with the other and that's why you saw that little i'm willing to bet on it that's why you saw that little blip there in the center of the screen uh, again, please, any of you Snap-on guys who are watching the video, if you can clarify that for us, please put it down there in the comments, share it with the rest of us. But I do know this, it's not a part of the capture, it's not a part of that pattern, uh, it's not a glitch I gotta worry about, it's not a fallout of the signal, none of that. Uh, it's, it's the scope and it's the way the scope works. So if you have that tool, don't let that throw you off, all right? Now that we've introduced the low amp clamp, we'll take some time to spend uh, over the next few episodes to try it in a few different situations. I know one of the more um, uh, common uses is for checking things like fuel pumps. Uh, this is something that we've been doing for a number of years. If you haven't tried this yet, not only can it help you gauge the electrical health of the fuel pump, but it can also provide you some diagnostic information. So stick around, that's coming up in the upcoming episodes of How To. But until then, this is Pete Meyer, Thanks for watching.